welcome back to Dolmio. It's been only a few weeks, right? Which is why I'm utterly shocked about the overwhelming support. 16,000 subscribers. I can't express to you just how happy I am. Seriously, thank you all. I, I did not see this coming. I introduced the channel by making Buttercup last time and I left in your hands the decision of which of her sisters I should do next. The feedback was huge and I got a very clear message about who I should work on. Bubbles was the winner by a landslide. Sorry Blossom, but I get why people love Bubbles so much. She's like the sweet little sister we all love, always kind and utterly adorable. That's why Laguna was the obvious choice for her face. She has the cutest face shape of them all. For her design, I kept to the color palette and gave her clothes that represent her sweetness and her girliness. Completely opposite to Buttercup, right? We start by cutting the hair, trying to get as close to the scalp as possible. And then we dunk her in hot water to soften the vinyl. After about a minute or so, we take her out and pull the head off. <laughs> Kudos to me for doing this faster than last time. Let's get all that glue and hair out. I had a really hard time getting all this stuff out. You can see the struggle, right? And this is why. I had never seen such a big piece of glued hair. Nice little surprise there. You probably noticed my switch to pure acetone. I regret nothing. Oh, and I also finally got a good respirator. I'm excited to use it for the first time. But maybe not in this weather. Um, Celine will have to wait. Once the weather is acceptable, I give the head a thorough MSC coat and we wait 30 minutes before the next coat. While I'm waiting, I'm cutting and taking off all those fishy parts. Bubbles doesn't need them. And let's not forget the ones between her fingers. I'll need a little help from my epoxy sculpt to cover the little holes on her legs. We should start on the hair first. I got this banana color from Retro Dolls Europe, and it fits perfectly to bubbles. Check out Maria Lazar's channel for a tutorial on how to make your own rerouting tool. And we jump straight to it. It takes a lot of time and a lot of patience to do this, guys. It's my first time doing this, and boy did it take the whole day. Sadly, I ran into a little bump along the way ran out of hair and I still had to fill out a considerable amount of head. So I decided to order more, but surprise, it was out of stock. I would have to wait. Meanwhile, we can work on something else, like the clothes. Let's use this little dress to make a new pattern. We separate all the pieces first, of course. And here we have all my fabric selections for the dress. Using some references, I'm making my own pattern. Basically, I'm winging it. Cross fingers. Then we pin the pattern to the fabric and cut all the pieces. And we sew everything together. Time for her accessories. I'm painting this bracelet green and pink to represent her sisters, just like I did with Buttercup's band-aids. I found this pair of shoes in my doll clothes box and they're absolutely perfect for the concept art. That was good luck. I just have to paint them blue and white to match and then seal them with DuraClear matte varnish to protect the paint. I got a little impatient waiting for the banana to restock, so I bought this color. You can barely notice the difference, so I think it'll work out. Finally able to finish the reroute, I reinforce the middle part. And when that's done, we add fabric glue to the inside of the head. Don't be stingy with it. 
then spread it around until you're sure it covered all the hair, leaving it to dry overnight. I totally forgot to mop the fishy ears, but it's never too late to start. So we cut the tips and then we use a poxy sculpt to shape them like regular ears. Then I mix some acrylics to match her skin color and use it to paint the ears and also the epoxy on her legs. Oh, and the fingers too, I always forget them. We give some nice washing to the body, which I previously sealed and forgot to record once again. We can finally start with the face up. I start using a light brown to sketch the initial details of her face. And I also start laying down some white and blue to the eyes, followed by the pink that adds a little depth and realism. After that comes the black. We use this to define those lines better. I realized way too late that she had some scratches on her face which horribly popped up thanks to the pastels. But I kept going and decided I would find a way to hide them later. I'm giving her soft blue eyeshadow or subtle makeup. And we come back to black to reinforce those details. Layering up is the secret to a good face-up. Oh, eyebrows next. I'll try my best. the eyelashes turn now, but I struggled a bit this time around. The black just wouldn't stick to the vinyl. I had to go over it a few times. I wonder if it has to do with the sealant? Anyways, I managed and I think I'm getting the hang of it a bit more. I decided to use yellow and make those eyebrows as close as to the hair color as possible using light brown later to finish drawing the final details. That's my struggle guys, eyebrows and eyelashes. Taking out the acrylics again, I paint her eyes to different shades of blue and also paint the white to make them pop more. The little eye shines are an important detail. Without them, the eyes look very flat and a little boring. Using the white pencil, we add a few last details under the eyebrows and on the lips. Now I gotta cover those nasty scratches. So I gave her a little heart-shaped glitter piece and why not? I think some white freckles will look cute too. Looks a little like stars, don't you think? Using my Perlex white powder, I give her face a last glittery touch-up. And after sealing for the last time, we complete the face-up by adding some shine to those lips and eyes using gloss varnish. Alright, we gotta style this hair. I was following some tutorials, but believe me, making the hair stay in the position you want? Not so easy. I had to go over it a few times, and I realized the hair from the concept would not match exactly. But I will make it cute either way. So the next step was to dip the hair in boiling water for the curls to set. But, oh snap, didn't realize until too late I should have probably not dipped the whole head in because the rubber bands would break. So I lost my pretty ponytails. I will have to wait until the hair dries to bring out the brush and make them all over again. And we leave her to dry overnight. Anyone else reminded of cussing it a little bit? The next morning the hair looked like this. Not what I was expecting. But I'm sure that with some brushing and styling she can still look awesome. Let's make those ponytails again and cut some of that length. I don't even work that hard on my hair. And here I am, doll super hairstylist. 
never saw it coming. Oh, and I almost forgot. We need those hair accessories too. The last bit to the whole ensemble. Bubbles was a great experience for me. The hair was a whole new challenge, and the scratches on her face scared me a bit, but I like the end result a lot, even if it's not exactly like the original idea. Now Buttercup's reunited with her little sister. Huh, total opposite from the light spectrum, am I right? As a last announcement, I decided to make the next video a Christmas special because well, that means that Blossom will have to wait a little bit longer. Cheer up, your turn will get here. Thank you so much for watching and for all the amazing support. Really guys, you are the best. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you wish to get updates from my channel. And if you also want sneak peeks, you're welcome to join me on Instagram and Twitter. Hope you had fun and see you guys in Christmas. Cheers!